more than 2.5 billion tons of iron, or are produced worldwide each year. But to reach this staggering figure, enormous quantities of magnetite, a rock from which iron is extracted, must be processed. But how is this mineral transformed into one of the strongest metals in the world? We visited the largest iron deposit in the United States and the largest processing plant on the planet to discover how iron is extracted from mines and how it is turned into steel. Iron is the most abundant element on Earth. Civilization could not survive without it. We find it everywhere, in skyscrapers, trains, and ships. But it is also the core of the Earth's center and runs through our veins. When iron is combined with carbon to form steel, it becomes one of the most versatile and resilient materials ever created. It is one of the most prized metals, not only for its unique strength, but because extreme heat can make it surprisingly malleable. Iron is one of the few things on Earth that starts as a mineral and once forged in fire, becomes a tool that can last for generations. It can be found beneath our feet. The Earth's crust is composed of 5% iron ore, and miners extract about 2.5 billion tons of it every year. In the northern mountains of Venezuela, ArcelorMittal operates one of the largest iron mines in the world. The ArcelorMittal Menorca mine produces more than 10 million tons of iron, or annually. It spans approximately 1.5 kilometers wide and 1 kilometer long. In this enormous open pit mine, one of the largest iron or deposits in the United States is being exploited. But where did all this iron come from? This deposit was formed billions of years ago, long after the Big Bang. Stars created elements that became so heavy, they turned into supernovas. One in particular helped form the Earth. When that dying star exploded, it released iron and other elements throughout its region of the galaxy. When the Earth was formed, it was a great mixture of elements, the remnants of the supernova. As these elements settled into different pockets, the iron, which is very dense, sank across the core. In fact, 98% of the Earth's core is iron. Massive amounts of iron remained in the Earth's crust, sometimes in the form of deposits, like a great iron-rich mountain that rose in what is now Minnesota. The first rains that fell on the planet were very acidic and dissolved the iron from the mountains, creating an ocean rich in iron. Hundreds of millions of years later, the dissolved iron solidified and settled at the bottom, leaving only the deposits we excavate today. The demand for iron is so high that the process runs 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. In Venezuela's, it's estimated that there is enough iron or to keep mining operations going for at least another 100 years. The ore extracted here is a type of iron oxide called magnetite, which contains about 22% iron. Until the late 1940s, American iron miners extracted a richer or called hematite, which contains 65% iron. But the enormous demand for iron during World War I and II depleted the nation's hematite resources. Magnetite is black, and has a lower iron content than hematite. Accessing the ore begins with an explosion. The explosives team will place 900 kilograms of dynamite in each borehole, equivalent to the amount of material needed to blow up the city of Oklahoma. The charges cover half a hectare of land and contain an explosive force nearly half that of the first atomic bomb. In the blink of an eye, more than 300,000 tons of rock shoot into the air. The ground shakes, and the roar is heard for miles. But why risk lives for a bit of iron dust? The answer is that it's not just dust, it's the raw material that will one day become the world's most important supermetal, steel. Nearly 98% of steel is iron. The compressed layers of the mine contain only about 25% iron oxide, mixed with silica and other impurities. It takes nearly 2 kilograms of, or to obtain just half a kilo of metal. Because so much or is needed to make steel, everything is done on a massive scale. Huge excavators scoop up the ore fragments. The largest excavator in the area can lift up to 59 metric tons of rock. These machines deposit the ore into gigantic trucks. These trucks are the size of a house and can carry up to 218 metric tons of rock. They transport the iron or directly to the processing plant. At the plant, the ore is crushed into even smaller pieces, with crushing machines operating like a 900 horsepower mortar. The crusher grinds the ore at an average rate of 3,000 tons per hour. Then, 360 kilograms rollers pulverize it into a sandy consistency. Once the crushers and rollers have reduced the iron ore to powder, the mixer combines it with water, 
to form a slurry that will then pass through magnetic separators. The magnetic separators are enormous drums, about 3 meters long and 1.2 meters in diameter, containing stationary magnets. As the drums spin, they collect the iron particles from the ore and separate them from non-magnetic particles. The machines then mix the iron slurry with clay, which is later heated to 1,300 degrees Celsius and molded into small, easy-to-transport pellets. And here is the result, iron or pellets containing 60% iron. Next, they are shipped by boat and rail to the smelting furnaces to be turned into steel. The railway has 232 cars, each carrying an average of 134 tons. It measures a staggering 2.5 kilometers, making it one of the longest trains in the world. The train takes the iron or to the port where ships are loaded. Every day, over 900,000 tons of iron or pellets are shipped by boat. From there, they head to the smelters to be transformed into steel. Producing steel in large quantities was one of the great technological challenges of the Industrial Revolution. The trick to creating this metal was achieving the exact combination of the two main components of steel, iron and carbon. With too much iron, the metal would be soft. With too much carbon, the material is too brittle, known as cast iron. Achieving the right proportion of iron and carbon was the planet's greatest challenge for nearly 2,000 years. It wasn't until 1856 that British scientist Henry Bessemer discovered an effective way to turn iron and carbon into steel. He did it by blowing hot blasts of oxygen into a specialized furnace to reduce the carbon content of the metal. Every day, 17,000 tons of iron or are poured into ArcelorMittal's smelters. Each year, this 400-hectare facility produces enough steel to build a railway around the entire planet. This is the most efficient steel-producing plant in the world. Most of the impurities have already been removed, but one remains, oxygen. Breaking that bond is one of the greatest challenges of modern industry. To do it, extreme heat and heavy machinery are used to extract the oxygen and infuse carbon, creating a metal stronger, tougher, and less brittle than pure iron. The iron ore is heated using a temperature generated by a fuel called coke. Very hot air ignites the coke, as if it were barbecue charcoal, raising the furnace temperature to nearly 2,200 degrees Celsius. At that temperature, the oxygen is finally released, leaving only pure molten iron. But something even more astonishing happens. As the coke flames remove the oxygen, the carbon from the coke bonds with the iron. Under that extreme heat, the mixture becomes liquid, and the impurities like silica and sulfur rise to the surface while the heavier iron sinks to the bottom. Every 45 minutes, nearly 500 tons of molten metal pour from that opening. But even though the iron has been freed from oxygen, it still contains too much carbon, more than 4%, making it too brittle a metal. To become steel, that proportion must be reduced to less than 2%. At temperatures above 530 degrees Celsius, the steel is still red hot. It is then transferred to a series of rollers, where it is cooled with water and reduced, from huge slabs of 34 tons and 23 centimeters thick, to thin strips just 2 centimeters thick, turning natural iron extracted from the mine into the world's most widely used high-strength metal. Takes just two and a half hours. If you want to know how aluminum is made, the link is in the description and in the first comment. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and share it with someone who might be interested. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications to keep learning. See you next time.